welcome to another episode of Just Us Dads. Thank you all so much for tuning in to another Dadversation. It's only the two of us today, me and Chris. Uh, and uh, before we get started, just uh, lots of thanks to everyone out there. We're, we've been getting a lot of good feedback on the on the video that we released this month. We're already working on the one in uh, for the one in April. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be much better. Uh, just some entertaining stuff that we like to uh, that we like to put out there. Uh, we're going to be probably doing much more of those in the coming uh, weeks and months. Uh, I think we all enjoy it, right? Um, it was fun, though, Chris. No, we we enjoy it. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun, and it's like uh, this is a typical day with with me and uh, my son. <laughs> it's embarrassing him in public. It, yeah, I'm, I embarrass him in public so I could teach him not to be embarrassed. But it hasn't been working so far. It hasn't. And uh, no. most of the comments I got was how good he was, and I'm like, you know, I'm not so sure that kid was acting. <laughs> he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was legitimately embarrassed. He yeah. was looking around him. <laughs> yeah, he's lived it so many times. He, just, he, know, he knows what, what's coming. He's like, oh, no, not again. <laughs> it, it's funny because I was telling, I can't remember who was, uh, it was either my wife or my sister. I can't remember. Uh, they're like, man, he's really good. I'm like, of course he's good. He did a fantastic job, but it was all real. The kid was really embarrassed. <laughs> He's like, no, come on. I'm like, yeah. Like he was asking us to film when there was nobody around. He's like, okay, no, 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 no. There's people coming. We're like, yeah, that's the whole point, man. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do another live one at the soccer field. <laughs> yeah, that's what's coming up. Yeah, yeah, like, a, like a like a hidden camera just to catch his reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, Dad, stop! Already he hates when people come to his games. Why? What it's it? like if it's one two people max. Nah. He doesn't like it when uh, everyone's there. <laughs> is he afraid that he might screw up and then people might see him? Why or like, no? I don't know. I don't know what it is. It just he's more confident playing when people are not there. And I told him when I when I was young and I would play, nobody would come. I, I would go alone. <laughs> exactly. It's like you go play and ten people want to come. Yeah, yeah. We've actually had neighbors come and watch him. Yeah, it's cool, man. Because they're there to. Yeah. So it's not because you see it's interesting how the kids minds work right they're like oh no they're gonna make fun of me or if i screw up they're gonna know i suck or like there's all these negative things that come in in their head instead of them thinking yeah look i got my support club they're gonna cheer me on every time the ball comes near me people are gonna clap and they're gonna cheer like they don't think like that they think yeah, yeah. i'm not at top of my game today i don't want them to see me <laughs> yeah i'm telling you there used to be games where i would go and i would hide behind like columns <laughs> it was the only place where he allowed yeah, to play. Yeah, yeah, I had to hide. I had to hide. It's like, okay, he's not going to watch us. And it's funny because the first time he did that, the first time I said, guys, I don't want you to come to the game. We're like, okay, we're not going to come to the game. We're like, why? He's like, because I play better when you're not there. I'm like, man, let's test that. <laughs> and it happened that the first game we didn't show up and he scored like five goals. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so now, we, now we're perplexed. It's like, we don't know. Is it true? Is, does the theory hold? But well, why though? What are you talking? I don't know. I don't know. It was cool. I don't know if it was coincidental, but it just not having our presence there. I guess it's. I don't know. Even though I'm not the, the kind of dad who tries to give advice, I believe in what the coach says. Right? You plug in into your coach. You plug into the team. You listen to what they have to say, and then yeah, you can do your little personal stuff on that. Like I'm not gonna be. I'm not the parents gonna say don't do that. Do it this way. First of all, I don't know enough. I only played, and uh, I played very little. I played four or five years. I think four years. And uh, look, it was like, yeah, it was. Yeah. I'm not gonna, yeah, and I don't even watch soccer. Like, I'm not a fanatic uh, uh, sports guy, so I'm not, I'm not gonna give him tips. Yeah. I'll, I'll help him with the psychology. I'll help him with like, do this. Don't worry about that. Keep your spirits up and stuff like that. Learn, be disciplined. Like, like I'll repeat stuff like that. But I'm not gonna try and coach him on the game. Yeah. But uh, yeah, maybe he doesn't like that. But, uh, yeah, I'm getting better. I'm getting better at it. I say less. I say less, but I mean more. And he, he kind of gets it, and I think we appreciate that. And we kind of found the balance. But it's not all, it's not all um, kids like that, George. It's not, it's not everyone like that. Some kids like it when there's fans. Some, some kids get energy when they see, you know, I don't know, their brother or their, their parents or friends. Yeah, it, de sure, it depends man. on the individual yeah it's a show right they're here to see me that's what i say that's yeah. what like maybe the, the the it's the it's the mindset it's the mentality of them thinking oh they're here for me they're gonna cheer or they're gonna cheer me on and you kind of want to impress them you know when you're that, that, that young and you want to show them a look look how good i am i'll grab mm -hmm. like i would think if you're there 
your kid will play worse because he's going to try to impress you so much that he's going to screw up or he's going to hog the ball too much or he's going to be too individualistic. Oh, no, he's like that. He passes the ball. He's he, no, he, sure, but, yeah. you know, like I, I would think that if I were in sports and I would have a, you know, like a like a group that came to see me, I'm like, oh, let me, I'll give him a show. They came to see me. No problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah, it depends. It, it, it's different uh, for every individual. It's different. But for, for, for my son, it's a little bit like that. So it's like, okay, come. Let's not try and make too much eye contact. <laughs> Don't scream too loud, you know. Don't get too excited when I score. Yeah, yeah. But you're, you know? but you're, you're also not that kind of, uh, uh, you're not that kind of guy either, right? You're not that crazy uh, partisan uh, sports fan kind of that. No, and no, you, no, no. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like you've seen parents. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, like they're they're crazy. Oh yeah, they're yelling at everyone. They're yelling at the, <laughs> yelling at the refs. Just yelling all the time. It's like fuck it. Did you yeah. watch the game or did you come here to yell? Like I've been to games where obviously I don't have kids that play sports, so I've been to other people kids uh, other people's kids games, and it was uncomfortable for me seeing these parents. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> well, some yeah, some parents take it to heart. Yeah, maybe that's what he thinks. He's like, "Oh my god!" No, no, no. I haven't shown signs of that. No, no, but it's, it's just his character. It's his character. It's like that. It's like he's he's more closed in. He's more, uh, you know, more of an introvert. Like he 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 doesn't like he'll take criticism, but on the side after the game, right? Not not during. Yeah. You know, but that's fine. It's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm learning. Yeah. Like I can imagine the kid playing and he's hearing all the the, the other crazy parents yelling and he, the only thought in his head is like oh thank God it's not my parents thank God so that's why he's probably thinking please don't come because if you <laughs> no but think of, it, it's crazy because I don't want you to be that person <laughs> because you know what sometimes you have the coach and sometimes you have the assistant coach and they're saying sometimes different things and then you have the parent in the stands saying a totally different thing you could confuse the kids the reason. Parents shouldn't talk to the kids while they're playing is because you're going to confuse them. Yeah. And then people that are confused do nothing. Players that are confused do nothing, don't know where to do, uh, don't know where to go and don't know what to do. Yeah. So you just have to refrain from, from, from screaming, but some parents don't understand that. <laughs> because you're better. You're better than the coaches, man. Always. You know more. You know, you know more. You just know, you just know more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time. It's, it's okay, but the... <laughs> can't wait can't wait can't wait to go back it's gonna it's starting soon no uh, uh he went today to to jerry park and played with uh, some friends respecting the rules of uh distancing yeah but didn't uh didn't the government open like uh team sports i think they they, they allowed they're, they're starting because i'm getting uh yeah we're getting because uh, he's in two he's in three teams actually yeah. so he's getting uh we got the text message and all that it's all starting I don't know exactly what the rules are. I don't know what the details are, but it, it, it's starting. Yeah. But it, it's good. He needed it. And it's the, we need it too. We need to go out. We got we to gotta get out. Got to get out. We can't stay in. Absolutely. And the timing is right too, right? Now it's beautiful weather. Hopefully we're going to have a good summer. Yeah, I think so. You know what? Whether the summer is good or bad doesn't matter. As long as you're out, your psychology gets better. Everyone's going to enjoy it. No, the psychology is guaranteed 100%. Just the last week or two when, you know, it's brighter after seven. Uh, I, was telling, I was telling Joanna the other day, I'm like, oh, man, it feels good. Spring is here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, it helps the fact that the weather is good. Obviously, we understand that the weather is not always going to be nice. But just at least the last week or so, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been nice. It's been Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, too. It's perfect. We barbecued. Let's talk a little bit because um, we we wanted to to discuss something that is very interesting and something that us as dads we're obviously gonna have to be mindful about, uh, and that's the the marketplace in the future, the jobs that um, the jobs that exist now, the jobs that we believe are gonna exist in the future. And of course, we're not experts, right? So everyone listening or watching, uh, <laughs> we're far from being any experts in this. But just as mindful parents, we're thinking, okay, our kids in 10, 15 years from now are gonna be out in the workforce what's going to be what is it going to be like right what um, uh, what are the trends uh, are jobs that exist today or high paying today are they still going to be around in 15 20 years from now and if they are will they be um, uh, paying the money that they're paying today because you know you want to kind of you know you don't want you don't want to kind of 
uh, dictate to your kids what they do, but you kind of want to guide them. You want to na- help na- help them to navigate um, through all the complexities of you know the workforce and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, so I think it's I think it's very interesting. And you brought up the other day, and I'm like, yeah, let, let's talk about that because one, I have no idea what it's like out there. I mean, you're much more in touch with um, with uh, with the workforce. I mean, to a certain extent, I am as well, but uh, I mean, not as much as you are. Uh, and the technology is just advancing mm. at, at this exponential rate where you have we have no idea what the hell is going to happen, right? You have AI now, and you mentioned a lot. We've spoken about AI a lot, uh, artificial intelligence, and how, what place and what role is that going to have? Um, and to a certain extent, it is a little bit worrying. I mean, we just saw the last year with a pandemic, uh, everything that just shut down, right? All these companies, they just got like this um, uh, this reality check where they realized, wait a second, why am I paying for this office space downtown, you know, corner of St. Catherine and St. Lawrence, for example? Like, why are we wasting money on, you know, just so we can say that we're at prime real estate when everything can function perfectly uh, from people's homes, right? Now, the the psychological issue is a whole other issue right the fact that you're waking up and you have to be home all the time like that's a whole other category but the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But these big businesses i mean they're looking at these things and it's huge savings for them right so things have changed like i mean just in this one year that we've been uh dealing with this pandemic that the 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 people the, you know the, the the amount at which people had to adapt themselves to whatever means exist like zoom now for example right mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. Anything else that exists um how to how to work from distance so they had to kind of adapt in order to survive and it seems as though they're not willing to go back um i was listening to i think it was last week um, the mayor of montreal uh, along with the governor of quebec they're putting you know they're investing all this money to kind of boost the downtown core again and you know the with uh, the montreal chamber of commerce they're trying to incite the businesses to to come back to downtown and to open their offices and to tell their employees to come back to work so there's like this whole strategy put in place right now to get people to go back to work but at the end of the day, I mean, I, I I get it. It's fine from the political point of view. You want to kind of stimulate your economy and all that stuff downtown, especially in a major city like Montreal. But from the perspective of the business owner, when it's coming out of your pocket and you're realizing that I don't need that expense anymore, uh, I could be investing that money in other technologies or anything else. Uh, it's a whole different reality. Yeah, look, it's... Um... I think it depends. I, everything you're saying is, I, I agree with everything you're saying. I think we share the same opinion on this, uh, that it is something that's coming up. It is something that is present. The pandemic kind of exposed the little weaknesses, or at least where companies or businesses can have some savings. It's not for every business. I'm guessing for people that could do a lot of the IT stuff from a computer, well, they just need their their Wi-Fi, right? And they can, they can have their, their VPN and they could just, do their work sitting at home that's fine and it takes a certain kind of person that doesn't need to see other human beings there's also the jobs where let's say you're more in sales or you're building relationships and you're presenting and you're going out there and 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 doing business development you could you could get away by working two or three days from home but the other two days you still got to go out there so i think it's on a per case on a yeah per case basis right um and uh it really depends what sector, what space you're in. So like example, I found it a little bit hard. I'll, I'll, I'll just tell up about my situation. I've been now at home for about a month and a half. It's difficult. You know, I don't get to go to the lunches I used to go, take, take out clients, meet people, go to offices, work on designs with people, build the relationships. I don't have that. So yeah, there's Teams and there's Zoom and there's all that wonderful technology, but I find it's missing. So I think the the best strategy a lot of companies are going to take are like a hybrid system, you know, like maybe three days at home, two days at, at work, or maybe two days or vice versa, right? But uh, I don't think we're going to go back to, to the world where prime real estate downtown, that's where all the, the concentration is. That's where all the offices, that's where all the action happens. I think people have, at least our kids, you know, we're talking about our kids. They have to start preparing for a different reality. I think the reality is going to be totally different. And uh, like 
Yeah. Go ahead. They're already living in this parallel universe, right, that we don't already understand. I mean, you know, you're telling me about your kid playing video games and communicating with someone with his headphones and fucking talking and strategy. Yeah, yeah. They're, they, they live in the Internet. They live in the Internet. And then, you know what? They're already in that environment already to begin with. Mm -hmm. And the Internet disrupted the industrial age era, right? So, like, we had the industrial age era where most people are comfortable working. We kind of still have that kind of format, right? Then we went into the inter in the internet era, in the information age, let's say. So our kids are kind of like the product of the information age. I don't really need to look for things. I can find them like from the on the tip of my hand. Yeah. I just have to press a couple of buttons and I got my, oh, I don't even need to press buttons anymore. I don't need to type anything. I, I could just speak into it, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're in there. And then the next era is probably the artificial intelligence era, which is like even more computing. We're looking at, we're talking about like, crazy amounts of computing power right quantum computing which is which is called so uh yeah a lot of jobs i think are going to be replaced and um a lot of new jobs are going to be created so you know how we used to where our parents used to tell us you could become a lawyer a doctor an engineer or an accountant that was it those were the, you know uh, yeah. i think that's going to be bad advice very 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 soon well look because it is it depends because i think i think that the the science field like doctors teachers uh, or the teachers aren't really in the science field. It's more education. But I don't see that going away. Maybe the technology will advance in a sense where you probably won't have to be in school or school. I think school as an institution will transform. Uh, but teacher, you're, you're going to need teachers unless even even if it's online. I mean, someone needs to teach it. Someone needs to put the program together. Someone needs to do yeah. it. Right? Well, uh, t t teachers you'll need, but I'll disagree on the on, on the science because – we tend to think that the people that are more educated are going to be replaced, right? We tend to think that, okay, he went to school, he went through universities, not, be, not necessarily. I think a lot of engineering jobs are going to be replaced. Obviously not the software engineers. Those are jobs of the future. Software, coding, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, virtual storage, right? Uh, cloud, right? Um, that's fine. But a civil engineer... People that do repetition calculations that are simple to do, like bending moments, shear diagrams, stuff like that, or even mechanical engineers to a certain point. Any person that does uh, repetitive work can be replaced because the computing power is a lot stronger with a computer. So it's not even about education anymore. I'll give an example, even like a radiologist. A radiologist is, is a doctor, right? He's in the medicine field, right? Yeah. Right? Medical field. So... He's somebody that looks at scans all day. Well, a computer can scan a lot quicker and could detect cancer cells a lot faster. So there's an example of somebody who's highly educated and highly paid that could be superfluous. He could, he could be replaced very, very easily. So it's not only the truck driver that's going to be replaced. Yeah. It's anybody that does. I'll give another example. There was this computer in China, I think, that was able to look through contracts and correct the mistakes and restructure sentences and stuff like that that means the person that whose job is just to do that forget about it well, so yeah obviously the cashiers tellers uh people in the warehouses those jobs are going to be replaced for sure but even some highly educated jobs are going to be replaced too because the, the jobs that are less less at risk i think are the jobs where you have some kind of creativity also also the hands-on stuff right like the construction yeah like, well, a construction industry, not really, because you could print. They're gonna be they're gonna be printing things. They've already printed a concrete dock, uh, building. Yeah, but they didn't say built. They they printed a concrete building. Yeah. So it depends. You know what I mean? There's a lot of and don't forget. Once jobs are erratic, because usually technology. This is the good thing about technology. It's gonna replace a lot of jobs, but at the same time, it's gonna create new ones. So the anxiety is high. People are thinking, oh, workers are going to be replaced. But you know what? Technology is going to create other jobs. There's going to be jobs for robotics manufacturing, replacing those parts, selling those parts, advertising those parts, uh, new medicine, biotechnology, info. There's going to be a, a big, 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 big opportunity as well. But there's also a lot of education linked to these sectors as well, right? Whereas... Uh, you can go learn a trade today with very little education and you can make a living and, you know, you can, you can live the rest of your life. And if you, I mean, it, it's difficult to imagine that in the near future, everyone is going to have that ability to learn advanced uh, technologies like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, 
So yeah, it's going to create jobs, but are those jobs going to be for everyone? I don't know. Like I was talking about hands-on stuff. Like you, you, I think you're always going to need a plumber. Uh, like see, I was telling you before, uh, the, the, we had high winds. They blew off one of my shingles. I needed a guy to come and put it for me. Like there's no machine that's going to come. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. yeah. So there's jobs like these that are probably going to remain. I, 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 it's difficult for me to imagine how they could get replaced, you know? But the other stuff, I agree with you. But uh, where the big question mark lies for me is that what you just said, where, you know, technology will create new opportunities. But are those opportunities going to be available uh, or interesting to everyone? Well, it's going to be I think it's going to be. No, you're right. And I think it's going to be like uh, the way computer kind of messed up a lot of people. Right. The people that kind of like kept up with the technology did okay. The person who, when the Excel sheet came out, the spreadsheet came out and he didn't learn it. He missed so many steps that now he can no longer be of value to the workplace. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be the same thing. So people that don't have any skills or didn't develop any skills are definitely going to have a big problem. And that inequality gap is going to grow more and more and more. So you don't necessarily maybe need to go, learn a coding language but it's not a bad idea to tell your kids to start at least looking at them right whether it's c sharp c plus um, plus java uh, python there's there's a lot of there's and you know what because technology is growing coding and writing code gets easier right because there's people that are working to make those languages easier to use as well yeah yeah you know you know, you, you, we're, we're talking a lot about artificial intelligence, and I'll be honest with you, there's very little that I know, and there's even less that I understand. Um, I, I, I mean, maybe it's the fact that you're saying, I mean, you know, you know how before our parents were that category of people that just didn't understand, right? It's like, dude, it's a computer. Come on. You know what I mean? That, for, us, for us, that was the technological advance, right? It's, uh, look, it's a computer. Look what you can do. Oh, the internet. Yeah, yeah. We were the internet. The internet was the first thing we didn't know how to use. Before, we had a computer with DOS, you know? Like, remember, there was a black screen with a green Yeah, light. yeah. Uh -huh. You had to write commands. C, two points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> programs. So, uh, and it was like the most fascinating thing for my parents. And... You're looking at what ha what is happening now where, like you said before, you pick up your phone, you yell at it, and it orders you, you know, your your dinner. You know, someone comes, drops it off at your door. Uh, it, it's literally next level. And this is all artificial intelligence, right? This is all, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I was reading, and I was telling you this uh, a while ago. Well, I was reading an article about the, the smart fridge. And this isn't even new now. Like, I mean, this is old news where you're going to buy a fridge and the fridge will be able to identify everything that's in your fridge and it will be able to determine your eating patterns and your eating habits. And it will know that, okay, whoops. So you have one tomato left and it'll be able to order online. Well, we're out of tomatoes. Let's go. Let's get new tomatoes, you know, order, boom, and then deliver home deliver. So it's like, yeah. it happens kind of, uh, automatically for you. you have, there's so many things. Yeah, there's so many. In, in in China, there's restaurants that that are run solely on robots. It's all robotics. Even even from your from your order to your server. That, that, that's insane to me to think that there's a robot cooking my food. But th see, th there's a problem with that because, and maybe you know, because you know we've had friends and family that have restaurants. I mean, we've lived in that kind of environment. And we've seen the passion that people have put be behind. You know, that it's an art cooking, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's so difficult to imagine like a robot cooking and not being able to taste or to feel or to say, ah, you know, maybe slightly overcooked or, you know, yeah, but that's not a new concept. We 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 see it now, George. We see that you're May West. It's it's not a chef that put it together. Well, there's a chef that you know what I mean. There's a guy who came up with it, probably more of a chemist. He he put together the right formula to get that taste, and then it's reproduced the same taste a million times. Go, but you know what I mean. It's it, it's not like a, a like like your mom baking a muffin. So it's not it's the the, the concept is not new. We're kind of processed food is kind of like. It is like artificial intelligence. It's just that it's going to go to the next step where it's a lot faster, a lot smarter, and it could probably come up with different variations. And it could say, hey, you know what? I decided to do this now based on all the recipes that I saw. Because that's how the algorithms work, right? You got to feed it. You got to feed it data. So the more data you feed it, the better decisions it can make. It's just that the algorithms uh, five, ten years ago were, were simple, simple code. Today, Artificial intelligence is different. The machine 
could see, could hear, could learn. It, it processes data differently. But we're still at the computing power. You know what? The, 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 the computer... The AI doesn't still doesn't have the human intelligence. It doesn't have the creativity. It doesn't have the consciousness. It doesn't know it exists. Yeah. So there's still barriers. So no, you're you're you can have a self-driving car today, right now, but you can you we don't have the robot that could just come in the house and you know turn on the microwave. It can't do that yet because it takes a lot more. Well, well, no, you have these uh, home. What are they called? Um... Uh, hold on, I need to sneeze. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, the home automation, whatever they're called. Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but that's that's just programs. Yeah. I'm just saying. Let's say you have a robot, right? Because what's scary about AI is not really the algorithms; it's the robots. People fear the robots. Yeah. And there was this nice TED talk by Sam Harris where he says he gave the analogy of of ants, and it's like if if the artificial intelligence gets to the point where it's so advanced that it becomes way smarter than us, right? The singularity point where we can't even, we can't even fathom, right? We, we have no way of even understanding at what point the technology is far ahead. At that point, they're going to treat us like ants. And, and the analogy is, look how we treat ants, right? It's like, we don't hate them. This is, what, this is what Sam Harris says. We don't hate them. We don't go out of our way to hurt them. But you know what? If you, if there's a real estate project and you know the bulldozer is there, you don't care how many you destroy. Yeah. So it's you just treat them with a certain disregard, with an indifference. Yeah, yeah. And that's what AI could do to us. They might just think we're just indifferent. An obstacle, just nothing. Yeah, uh, just nothing, nothing. Like whatever. I don't know what this is. So there's and you know and there's two camps, right? There's like the Elon Musk was an alarmist who's thinking that this is bad stuff like Sam Harris. And there's other people like uh, uh, Ben Gertzel that it's, or other people that think this is the best thing that's going to happen, you know? And it's like, you know, we could do it the smart way where we kind of keep them contained and it's not, it's going to be a force of good, not a force of bad. So there, there, there there's two kind of mentalities in the AI um, field. It's tough to imagine that with every technology, there isn't some disturbed mind thinking of the bad yeah of course and obviously we're thinking about robot soldiers here and all the bad movies right terminator yeah no but yeah but i mean like that may be exaggerated or maybe not who knows but, like you know imagining in the near future like an army of robots right where it's like you know yeah yeah you have a a 25 year old controlling all these things from yeah yeah, yeah and he has the, the exclusive control of what these killing machines could do right uh, yeah, and, and that's where that's where it gets cynical, George, because it's fine to to replace like we talk about jobs that won't exist, right? So uh, jobs are going to be replaced uh, like in agriculture, farmers, ranchers, stuff like that, data entry specialists, drivers, delivery men, post op, all that stuff is going to be replaced. Cashiers, tellers, that's no doubt because there's it's 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 work based on repetition, but where it gets cynical, where it gets crazy, is that replacing the soldier. So now you don't need human life to be soldiers. Now all you're doing is creating, killing machines that are machines. Yeah, and that's where it gets a little bit crazy. And that's where it's like, ooh, you know what? Maybe, maybe the solution that, like, uh, what's his name says, he, he has a couple of good points. Uh, Yuval Noah Harari. He's the guy who wrote uh, Homo Deus. He wrote uh, Sapiens, and he wrote uh, Twenty One Lessons of the Twenty First Century. He's a historian, but he's also looking at the future. But he has great points. This guy has two things he said that like really stuck with me. One, he said that the problem with AI and the jobs, it's not going to be that people are going to be exploited. You know, like the whole Marxism ideology, right? The worker was being exploited. You had an oppressor and the oppressed. So there was a struggle of classes, proletariat with the bourgeoisie, and there was that clash. And he, the advocates of Marxism were the people that were saying, you know what, we, we shouldn't have this inequality. We shouldn't have this oppressor, oppress, oppress, oppressed relationship. What we need to do is stop exploiting people. Right. And Yuval says, forget that. That's an issue of the past. The problem with the new workers is going to be they're going to be irrelevant. 
And in a way, you'd rather be exploited than irrelevant. Because if you're exploited, you still have a job. You can still do something. When you're irrelevant, no one wants you. You have no value. Right. Right. You see, and it, 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 it kind of gives you a perspective like, okay, wow. It comes back to what we're saying before. Technology is one good thing, yes. And the jobs it might create is another But is it for everyone? That's what it is. Like, I mean, maybe yeah, some, yeah. Uh, that, that, some people are going to be left behind. Yeah. And there, you know what? There's no hope. It's like there's no miracles. But that's why now you have other things. Second thing that Yuval talks about. It. And then I'll tell you another thing that Elon Musk says. But Yuval says, you know what? This is such a big problem that it has to be kind of solved at the global scale. Right. You can't rely on every nation to figure this out. Like right now you have Russia, the U.S. and let's say China and in and, and, and England or Britain, say Britain. Right. That are working for for to be the pioneers of A.I. But we do understand that the first person who kind of figures it out first. Wins. Right. It's almost like winner takes all here. I'm afraid that that's already happened. I'm afraid that someone has already figured Me, it out. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But the thing is, because it's an exponential curve, being 50 years ahead of everyone else is like being a thousand years ahead of everyone else. Right. right? Can you imagine, like, if we're going back, let's go back to that. Uh... No, but, uh, let me just finish with, with a third point, because that's why. So w- one is, the second point of Yuval is, we're going to need to figure out this problem or at least resolve this kind of issue at the global stage. It can be nation to nation. It can be relying on country to country to do this. And the, and the other thing that Elon Musk says is that we're going to have to come up with some kind of universal basic income. Right. So there's going to be so many people without work. And then there's another debate of what kind are we going to be using money? Is, is Bitcoin going to come in blockchain? And there's all that debate as well. We could have another uh, episode on that, but Think about it. You'll, you'll probably need a universal income to make sure that people don't kill each other. Yeah. Well, that's the theory, right? I'm not saying uh, I'm a proponent of it or I'm against it. I'm just saying that that's what Elon Musk says. And I think uh, Yuval Noah Harari, too, is a, is a proponent of that as well. But there's going to be there's going to be issues. It's going to be a different role. Then it goes fast. And AI is it's so exponential that once you get to the intelligence above the human intelligence, and then that intelligence knows how to become more intelligent and learn more, Multiple. you're at the point, yeah, you're at the point where you're doing work, work that, um, let's say, 10 scientists would do in a year, like maybe one artificial intelligence brain, if you want to call it that, would be doing in, 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 in four seconds. Mm-hmm. Right? What is going to be the work done? That, that's what's crazy. It's the unknown. It, it, it's it's crazy to think uh, of the of the uh, of the potential escalation that this could have, and especially when you get to uh, we were talking about before the you know the the, the the when you're getting to the army stuff and to the um, to the to the soldiers. Can you imagine? Because it, it, I mean, it, everything is just a production line, right? Okay, how many do we need? We need a thousand. Let's go pump them mm-hmm. out, you know? and it's just you know send them it's just non-stop you know yeah, yeah. Um, but it's also all the good right like we tend to, to stick on the cynical and, and the bad there's all the good there's treating cancers there's identifying cancers or things like uh, in in britain they're doing this thing where they could really uh they could give a prognosis on on parkinson's they put a sensor and you walk and they see the vibrations they study that wave and they can say if you're you're predisposed to have parkinson's they can look at different things uh, imagine the data right so you have your live instead of going for blood tests you have that live on an app right. any second you want to know what your brain chemistry is you have it if every time you need to know what your body chemistry is you have it so there's going to be the good stuff right It's good, but at the same time, it's also scary to think that at some point you're going to have to test it out, right? So now the, mm-hmm. you know, that whole discussion about getting chipped, uh, you know, uh, you've heard about this, right? I mean, it's the new thing now. Like, Absolutely. But that's for the financial world. It's like forget about your wallets, forget about your IDs. We plant a chip inside you and everything you need is there, right? But that- that's what the conspiracy theorists, all these like the anti-vaxxers. Are thinking that you're getting the chip it's they're, they're conflating to no they're conflating to different things you could be anti-vaxxer for whatever reason but you're not getting the chip like that <laughs> but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that in x amount of years in the future 
You know how we were going for vaccines around? We're, we're waiting in line to get vaccinated. Be well, you're going to be waiting in line to get your chip. I don't think the chip is such a ludicrous idea. Oh, not even. Like, you'll have the chip and it'll be like an upload. It's like, yeah, oh. with we'll, we'll all your information. Here's the latest version. Make sure you upload your chip. And it just <laughs> it updates it updates yeah. your it updates your medical condition. Uh, it, it's you know, look, I I can understand the advantages, especially when you're talking about the health industry and the health sector and all the benefits that you just mentioned. But it's it, it's just scary to me that it's going to get to that right. Like yeah, yeah. the idea that you you're going to have like three four chips inside your body and then maybe like a central motherboard in the back of your brain, like we've seen in some movies. And I don't know, man. It's but it's but it, it, yeah. But you could like think about it. You could extract your DNA and make a new lung. You can extract with your DNA. You can analyze. You can have an AI intelligence or AI intelligence, an artificial intelligence kind of brain again that is able to to analyze everything, and it says this is the kind of organ you need. This is what you need to prevent this. This is how much iron you need in order not to have this deficiency. You know what I mean? You're even going to be able to. Uh, it, it's so there's good and there's bad. There's both. But what's even more scary is that we're not we don't even we're talking about jobs before right like the jobs are going to be eradicated and all the jobs are going to be um, invented let's say right but there's also all the jobs that we don't know that are going to be invented yeah because yeah. in 20 30 years if ai has advanced well there's going to be new jobs that today we're not aware of but are going to be invented then right, right, right. so there's a lot of unknown in the future so whether it's 50 or 100 years like accountants might not even exist. What's an accountant? You know, you're not going to need an accountant to go over all that information. Computers suck at creativity. Like they cannot tell you what the color pink is. They cannot tell you if, what kind of uh, a chocolate chip ice cream would it taste like. They don't have that. That's the human side that they don't have yet. But when it comes to computing, sorting, analyzing data, they're quick, they're fast. So any job that relies on that is gone, but it will give birth to, uh, to new things logistics, uh, coders, like, you know, so there's going to be a lot more that's going to be created. It's just, we cannot, uh, the way I talk to my son is I don't want to corner him into a box because you know what? Well, because don't forget, look, uh, don't forget that we now as parents are in that phase where we understand that based on this development, like you just said, there may be things that we don't even know yet that will exist, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. not the case for our parents. Our parents could not you know, they, they could have bet their entire, you know, livelihood, their their house, uh, that where we are today would have never ever happened. Like, well, look, there, were, there was the exception, right? Like, like if I told my dad uh, in university, I'm going into digital marketing, like he, he he wouldn't understand that, right? Yeah, no, but before university, man, like let's say at at the age of your son right now, okay, 11 years old. When you were 11, like think about it, right before you go into high school, you tell your dad, "Dad, I'm gonna go into uh, into technology because in the future you'll be able to have a cell phone that will be able to show you a map of your village in Greece in seconds." You'd get a, you you get a yeah, yeah 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 of course <laughs> you'd, get yeah. Like, you, you, you'd get a a look minimum. It would be a look minimum. Yeah yeah. yeah. So they didn't have that reflex because we didn't have that sort of evolution. Now, us as parents, we're there. We see this. And obviously, we have a little more intellect to understand what's going on. And, and more information. And more information. Absolutely. and more A lot of stuff is more is exposed now, right? Yeah. Uh, to, to, to be able to project wh what may happen or even if you don't know what may happen, you're aware that there's things that will happen that you don't know about, right? Like, like technologically in terms of advancement. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, boxing in your kid to think that, look, uh, you know, there's uh, doctors, there's engineers, uh, you know, you can be a teacher, you can whatever it is. Yeah, you are definitely boxing the kid in. But at the same time, how do you, uh, I don't know, how do you even start by... Uh, guiding your kids or you don't the guiding can yeah no it's a good question uh, what you're asking george because but you can guide you can guide based on career you gotta guide in terms of values you gotta guide in terms of things that haven't changed in thousands of years the fundamentals you know what i mean you you, you can guide within like career no, but see, everything is going to change. This and and I go, I I always use our parents' generation as an example because they knew that if you went and told them back in the '90s that I want to be a rock star, 
versus that I want to go get an, a university diploma, they would know, okay, let me steer him towards university diploma versus, all right, son, go, uh, you know, play music or uh, do art or, and nothing to, uh, nothing against musicians or artists out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mentality. So they had that kind of, you know, they had whatever they they needed to to say. Okay, I gotta steer my kid there because there uh, it's th- it's the red zone. Like there's a lot of flags. We it, gotta- it's different. It's different from us. It's different from us. Now it's different because you, first of all, you cannot follow that same pattern because, like you said, it, it's night and day, right? Like we know now at at this early stage in our in parenthood, even though our kids are far from the marketplace, the workforce. You know that, and we're, we've spoken about this in other episodes, where if your kid tells you that I want to be a YouTuber, you're going to be like, you know what, let me encourage it because you know that there's money there or you know that there's a future. You know that there's a whole world of opportunity, even mm-hmm. though it's completely different from the reality of what your parents would probably tell you. What? What are you talking about? Making videos? Are you crazy? You're going to get a diploma. Yeah. So we're, we're in that middle ground where we understand what could work versus what cannot work. But at the same time, because there's still an unknown out there, how yeah. do you know where to where to steer? And it, it, and it was a different paradigm, right? To go back to our parents, our paradigm, uh, our parents' paradigm was the play it safe mentality, right? It was risk reward, like keep keep keep, keep the risk low and the reward ro- low, but it's safe, yeah, yeah. right? And back then, a rock star was like high, 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 high risk, but high reward. An actor was a high, high risk but a high reward because there was one out of 5 million, let's say that made it. Yeah, yeah. So our parents understood that. So that, that was the paradigm. It was like today you don't have that kind of risk reward. You're thinking what's going to be relevant. What's not going to be relevant. And you're kind of thinking more, I want my kid to be happy. Right. We, we, we think more like this today. We don't think like, Oh, go. And you know what, back then, if I told my dad, you know what, I'm miserable at my job. He wouldn't tell me leave. Live with it. He would say, "Got you. Got to do what you got to do," because that's the mentality. Today, we're we have evolved a little bit more into thinking like, you know what? You have choices, and whether that's a good thing or not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not giving my opinion on that. I'm just saying that today we kind of tend to think more. You know what? Go and do what your passion is. Go and be happy, and you're not stuck anywhere. You have choices. You can navigate and do whatever you want. So it's 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 almost a, operating through different paradigms. But you know why though? Because we know and we've seen it so many times uh, that there are tools available that whatever you're interested in, if you mm. put the effort, you can actually make it. It's not yeah. impossible. Like back in the 80s, 90s, if you told your dad because you're a virtuoso guitarist that I want to be a guitarist and I want to do music, it would be like a hard no. It was like, no way. But yeah, not in this house. Forget about it. Yeah, not in this house. So, but today, because you've already seen it happen, like, I mean, we're talking about this the other day with George. Uh, you were sending each other videos like, look at this guy. Like everyone has like this tremendous talent and they're making money because they figured out the tools that exist now to showcase their talent and actually get paid and get paid well or get, you know, publicities or sponsors or whatever it is, you know, um, become like, inf- you know, quote unquote influencers in whatever domain that they're good in. Mm-hmm. We know that we've seen it. So, but it's still, but I still think that we're almost still attached to the other reality that we've inherited from our parents where it's like, do we go to the safe route or do we go here where I know it works? I've seen it, uh, but I don't really understand it. And besides, nobody knows what's going to happen in the future with this. Like there's still a few unknown factors, but you do understand it though. And you can kind of relate to it. You know, you're like, mm, yeah, it does make sense. I've seen it. I get it. Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, 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 no, you're right. You're right. You're, you're right. And you can't be certain about anything. And that's why I would say I would refrain from, um, uh, from trying to guide too much and put barriers, you know, you're trying to focus on the good, you're trying to focus on the fundamentals. And at least you, what you're trying, I think what I try and focus on is just to develop or at least plant a seed in my kids to at least want to learn more, explore more, you know, don't put, I don't want them to, like, I'm never going to put barriers to them because I don't want them to put barriers to themselves. So you want them to explore. And like you said, you know, if you, if you want to do something, all the resources are there, all the information is there. I'm telling you, you could, 
take two hours a day, research stuff on YouTube or Google, and after two years, you're like a master. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know what I mean? You you could any topic. There's Udemy. There's programs like that. There's also LinkedIn gives courses and classes and training. There, there's so much. That's why we call it the information age, yeah. right? Because the information is abundant. It's everywhere. There's no lack of. So yeah. it's a different world, right? So we cannot. We can. Th- th- and we've said this in the past. We cannot raise our kids the way our parents raised us because our parents raised us thinking of their world and it's a different world today and with, so a, you, and with a very limited knowledge that they had also right? yeah yeah but but they had the fundamentals down they, that, that's what i'm saying fundamentals like will are, are the most important because they've survived thousands of years like let me give you an example that i heard many times in my house uh and i want to know where you stand today because i don't know where i stand Th- this line it, it, i i it kept repeating itself consistently in my place when we were growing up get your university diploma and then do whatever the hell you want you understand but it's like where do you stand on that now no no yeah i i so don't think like that anymore well forget forget the university diploma let's just okay yeah it's like you know go go get a degree and uh, no one could take that away from you type thing mentality and it's like who would want to take it away number one (laughs) there's nobody that's going to take that away from anyone uh second it, it's you know what it ain't be, because we're in the information age because there's so much information out there the universities and the schools who used to be the gatekeepers of this information right they used to get paid money be, for them to share that information so that's where the value of university education was it was i have something sorry i you have something that i don't have and you as a university, I'm going to pay you because you are the gatekeepers of education. So I'm going to give you my hard-earned money for you to give me what you have. That kind of transaction or relationship is not going to be needed in the future because information is everywhere. So you're not going to need these kind of institutions to go get your education. So I think degrees are going to become maybe useless. I, I'm, that's my opinion. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. Uh, they're going to become useless. They're going to become, in a way, redundant. And I think the I think the dynamic is going to be more mentoring. You're going to have different sponsors. You're going to like maybe go and attach yourself to somebody who's done it. That's going to train you and teach you. And you're going to be doing the learning by yourself with the help of AI. So I think it's going to be more. It's it's not going to. The learning won't happen at the big institutions. It's going to be at the personal level. So you think that uh, our, our, our education system, or more specifically, you know, colleges and universities, are going to see this transformation? Like it's interesting what you're saying because when when you're saying that the information is already out there, so you don't need a college or university professor who's been doing this for thirty years and has like, you know, the material to 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 give off to his students uh, versus a kid that already has the information and just needs the experience and they need to, someone that already has hands-on uh, knowledge and experience to kind of guide them, perhaps the university is going to be a forum where you're going to bring people from the professional milieu, right? Like, uh, Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But it's definitely going to be, I'm on the blackboard, I'm writing this, take notes and start memorizing. Like people that are still memorizing are wasting their time. <laughs> memorization if you have a computer that can do it better and store more information you don't want to be memorizing you want to be applying the knowledge not memorizing right yeah. but i also see another world maybe i'm an optimist on when it comes to this but i, I see a world where because the machines or whatever the, the the artificial intelligence right through the deep learning and the machine learning and they're going to be able to learn and and probably do things better well we're going to pretty much replace all the mundane stuff in our lives, which will probably give us more time to enjoy passions, you know, family. Like what? What do you mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying that if we're able, if we're able to take care of the mundane stuff and somehow currency money is different. Well, I see, I I see a different world where you're not going to, you're not going to need to do the nine to five to survive. You won't need to make 80 grand 
in order to be above poverty. I see that the machines are going to be able to help us get out of poverty because we won't need to do the basics. They're going to have like this A to Z kind of uh, uh, process. Yeah, like, well, yeah, like, like think about it. Like, you know what? Like uh, my granddad was somebody that had to go in the field at four in the morning and come back home at five at night. Right. Mm -hmm. And because he was in agriculture example, well, if the machine right now you have tractors, so you could produce more with less. Mm -hmm. So think about it. Quality goes up and, um, and, and cost goes down. That's, that's, that's very nice. When quality goes up and cost goes down, it's a great thing. Now the next level would be to maybe overall replace all that. So you won't even need a guy driving the tractor, irrigation, all, all, all that stuff is going to happen by itself. So you won't need to be there. So physically, you're not going to be there. So you're going to have maybe more time to do something else. Right. I get it. So, the, the, you know, AI can help with that, where we kind of do our human things and we don't have to, like, you know, like devote half our life to labor. Yeah. And it could be more intellectual work. It could be more creative work. It could be at a, at a different level. So that's what all the unknown is, you know, like we don't know, but it's, it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that are optimists and there's a lot of people that are pessimists. You know, it could be the end of the world as well. <laughs> it could be a couple of wrong moves and it's like, we're done. No, but just imagine having a robot at home or like e each individual has like a robot that does the work that you do for you. Like that's what you're saying, right? And it's because they're the perfect machine. They can, uh, uh, you know, they can project and they could think and they could uh, just, you know, if there's a mistake, they know exactly how to correct it, or maybe there won't be any mistakes, right? And it's like, okay, this is where we are. Uh, we need to go from point A to point B. This is exactly what I need to do. Okay, blah, blah, blah. and obviously they can do it much better than you. And it's like you just you're making money. Yeah, maybe maybe you're even paying the robot. <laughs> No. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe you're subcontracting it, right? The robot is your employee. Is your employee? It's like, hey, man, I need this, I need that, and it's like, okay, it obeys. It's never late. It's never tired. So you know what? It's 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 one of those things. And think about it, like think about it. Think if we're able to get to a point where we replace all the bad, dangerous jobs, all the shitty jobs that no one wants to do, like the like like mining. Like nobody says, I'm gonna go mine, and I love it. It's my passion. But if a robot can do it, then a human doesn't. So that human can go do maybe move on to other things that he likes to do. Yeah, but sometimes you can't, man, because don't forget, mining is not something that happens in your downtown core of a major city. Like it's in the region, somewhere lost where there aren't that, that many opportunities. And that's why actually people do it, because there are no other jobs available, right? So you have communities that, that are going from father to son, and we're talking about... Hundreds of years now, it's been a tradition, right? It's like, that's, that's mm -hmm. what we do over here. This is a mining town, and uh, that's the only jobs that are available. So what else are you going to do? Like, you live 300 miles away from, let's say, for example, a city like Montreal, and there's not that many opportunities. So, yeah, you get that robot. It replaces your job. But what else can you do? What are you going to do? I don't know. Right. Poetry. Yeah. No, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Look, uh, th th these are obviously things to think about. And it's interesting because there's definitely going to be a new world and the new world is coming soon. The future is, is closer than we think. The future is actually now. And if the growth is exponential, like we'll be deep into the future very, very, very quick. Uh, but again, I'm a big advocate of, of the good ideas, of, of the fundamentals and, and the good values. You know, no matter, no matter what or how far we go into the future, a moral thing is a moral thing. An immoral thing is an immoral thing, right? Murder is murder. You know, it's like if we were able to sustain these kind of values, I think we'll we'll do well. I don't know, man. It, it's it's a little bit scary. I I like you. I, I'm excited because this is something that obviously I don't know anything about, but it's still something that interests me, right? It's like, okay, what are we going to be able to do now, right? And this, mind you, it, it's all it's all human intellect that comes up with this stuff. So you got to give credit to the people that are actually forward thinking enough to say, this is what we need to be doing. Of course, now there's machines in the background doing everything right. Yeah. Thinking and, you know, like you mentioned all the artificial intelligence, but it's a human brain that comes up with a concept of let's have machines 
cook the food in a restaurant in China or whatever your example was, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes a brain to kind of think of where can we apply this technology. So for me, that's what I find interesting to see where can it be applied. And like you, uh, what benefits can it have? Yeah. Look, uh, look for, for me and, and the listeners and the people, it's like, you know, like I've spent like, I don't know, on YouTube, right? Documentaries and, and TED Talks and and lectures. I, I saw, uh, I followed a four hour lecture on AI. Like, I want to make sure that I have about 100, 200 hours of this stuff. Like for people, not, not because you're curious, just you need to know a little bit of this. Mm-hmm. I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you do not touch this space. Right. And you know what? You should get your, your kids to, to, to maybe follow a lecture, see what it's about, see what robotics is, what is digital marketing, what is, uh, uh, what's the future, w- what is the marriage of biotech with infotech going to do, right? What is that analysis? Why is it used? What is machine learning? What's deep learning? And what's coding? Why do we need to code? What's an algorithm? Like you cannot miss that train, right? You know, because the, the brain is very powerful, man. And I, I always, you know what? I, I'm, uh, I'm always rooting for the human because I believe an, an extraordinary human is going to be always better than a thousand machines. You know, like one machine can always replace one machine could replace average people doing mundane stuff but i don't think a machine yet today can replace an extraordinary person that has the the creative side that has uh the ingenuity that human spirit you know there's a soul in the human that you cannot create that yet but but where we mess up george is the brain is a trillion dollar machine but a lot of people are using three five or seven dollar software and today we said this last time we have we're running bad ideas into our brains there's bad ideologies today there's stuff that don't make a lot of sense that we're not challenging enough so the the, the trillion dollar brain if it runs on four dollar software has a problem right. same thing with the ai right the ai could be a trillion dollar computer but if the software is bad or has bugs or i don't know just features are not good well you know that could be to, to the detriment of humanity. Well, yeah, because that's what I was going to tell you. I mean, yeah, extraordinary humans are amazing, and they're going to over, or they're going to always super uh, su- supersede whatever uh, amount of robots or machines or technology that you have. But how many humans fall into that category of extraordinary? Well, yeah, no, no, you're right, you're right. But uh, you know what? Like we need, we all need each other. That's what it is. It's, it's, it's one of those things. We're a social animal with group loyalty. Yeah, you're right, man. <laughs> I feel that the, the more that the generations are passing, the more individualistic and introverted people are. Like you take kids today and not, not necessarily kids, but even young adults that grew up in that um, that boom of technology, right, with the internet and all, you know, all the that, that social media and all these things that are online, where they haven't developed the social skills that we had the chance to, for example, because mm-hmm. these things existed. Um, uh, I forgot where I was going with this. Um, yeah, how how do you think people like that are are going to develop the reflex to say? We need each other, and yeah, let's let's uh, let's create our yeah. When well, maybe, maybe, yeah, but you know what? You're I, I understand where you're going. I understand what you're saying, but that's assuming that the means or the the modes of communication are going to stay the same. What happens if we're able to communicate at different wavelengths or at different dimensions or through telepathy? What happens if we're able to communicate without actually speaking, and the communication is is more? You know what I mean? We don't know this stuff. So it's like, yes, if you assume that the modes of communication stay the same and the relationship between human and human is as is today, yeah, it's going to be tough later. But I think that everything is going to change. The way we communicate is going to be changed. Uh, everything. Like we're going to discover different things. We're going to discover different parts of the brain. There's going to be, like they're talking about today with um, neuroplasticity, neurogenesis, which is the study of epigenetics, where you, your your brain could could make millions of links in order to think differently and and make new pathways, which obviously increases intelligence. So there's you know what there's there's I think the future is big. I think there's a lot of stuff that we're almost you know what how I think about this. Let's say you go back. Let's say you go back to to Socrates, right? 
right? Plato and Aristotle, that kind of era, where the means of communication was ancient Greek, right? If like those people cannot understand or fathom the idea of what an email is, obviously, because they can never think that far, right? So we're at the email today, but what is next? We don't know. Right, right, right. Right, right. It's like as if now we're communicating like Aristotle and Socrates. So we don't know in a thousand years. It's probably not going to be language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I think uh, we have to start thinking that kind of way. And I, I see the analogy you're trying to make. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's still amazing because, uh, again, we have uh, an advantage where we understand that there's technology now in place and it's moving at really rapid pace where it wasn't the case back then. <laughs> no, it moves fast. It, it goes quick. Yeah. It goes so quick that if you miss it, you miss it. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, my mom did secretarial work, right? She was a secretary. And uh, she kind, she almost missed the email and the, and, and the computer. So it's like now she's been out of work for, 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 for a while, maybe two, three years. Forget the next, like she, she, she'll never catch up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like with the teams and the zooms and <laughs> like it, it's gone, <laughs> right? And it, it's it, it's just what reality is. Yeah. So it's going to be even more dangerous in the future if you miss a step, man, you're done. It's funny. It's funny that you mentioned <laughs> uh, in a couple of days. I have to I have to put together a meeting, uh, and obviously we can't meet, right? And it's uh, it's older people, uh, you know, from the community and. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think how is this going to unfold. I'm telling them it's going to be a Zoom because there's no other way. I mean, we have to do it. Yeah. have fun. Have fun with that, man. <laughs> I'll tell you how it goes. Like honestly, the average age of these people is like about 70 years old. No joke. Look, the, the, yeah. so I don't know. Maybe maybe some of them. Oh. But it's not the 70 year old because I work with 16, 65 year olds that. We're, we do this every day together because they didn't miss a step. Oh, exactly. They were there. They were there and they were, they were exposed to every technological cycle. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? They made sure they were, you know what? This text messaging came out. I'm starting to text message. Yeah, the Facebook right. came out. I'm going to go on that, you know, and then they kept up. Yeah. They're on the wave. They're every wave that comes They're They're kind of riding it. Uh, now picture, picture a guy who used to work in the restaurants and the last I don't know. The last job he did was in 1997 and then did nothing. And then it was just TV from there. Think of everything this person missed from 1997 to 2021. I know someone. I know. I know someone. uh, Everyone knows someone. Yeah, of course. We all know that guy. That hasn't worked. uh, um, I don't want to exaggerate, but at least 12 years. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. It is. It is. It is. It is. Like that person, even even if you wanted, even even if you tried, it would be incredibly difficult. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what does it look? And that's why. And this is a sensitive topic, but we could do one uh, at a future time, where we're so obsessed with equality, and equality doesn't exist anywhere in the world, and trying to make everything equal is going to cause more problems than it's going to solve. Yeah. Anyways, I'll leave it at that. It's just, you see, that that's a big inequality, and I feel bad for a person like that. But how do you solve that issue? Yeah, you can't. You can't. Yeah, because uh, there's, there's so much gap. It's almost like the inequality gap with money. It's like, yeah, maybe we could, you know what, take all the money from the rich and distribute it. And you know what, maybe, maybe that's going to solve but something but i don't think it is so there's there's a lot of inequality there's an you know there's inequality with skills there's inequality with intelligence there's an inequality with with uh, competence there's inequality physical inequality there's biological inequality some people you know so it's like we cannot go into this new world thinking that we're going to solve this inequality issue we have to deal with it not solve it yeah you know anyway but um, I think yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's a great way to send it off, man. Um, let's uh, let's wrap it up. Um, to anyone out there, if this was the first time uh, that we met, 
head on over to uh, YouTube, subscribe to our channel, uh, like our Facebook page and all the other social media platforms as well as the audio platforms. We got episodes coming out every single week. We got blogs uh, uh, coming out every two weeks and we got video clips that are coming out every month. Probably we're going to uh, increase that number as well soon. Uh, so there's a lot of content out there. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see. Uh, we'd like to hear from you as well. Um, so yeah, do us uh, a favor. It'll mean the world to us if you support our um, our stuff. Uh, thanks again, Chris. We were just the two of us today. It was so much more interesting than fucking having George around. You. Yeah, I think we should fire him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. <laughs> All right, guys. Ciao. See you guys in the next episode. <laughs>